I go into the word of the Lord uh, as I teach uh, on our theme for the year, which is God. Uh, and this is part four of my series on God. And my subtitle is The Word of God. The Word of God. Uh, I have said that the first chapter of the Bible, that is Genesis chapter 1, introduces us to God. It is God's self-introduction. And so what we see happening in Genesis chapter 1 is God saying, this is who I am. Uh, and, and so it starts with uh, verse 1, where we discover that God is the creator. And, and not only is he the creator, that he's an omnipotent creator because he created without anybody's help. He did all things by himself. He has all the power to create. We also discover right there also in verse 1 that God existed before creation. So he's eternal and he is infinite. So that's the nature of God. And in verse 2, uh, we discover that God is not only the creator who is infinite and who is omnipotent, uh, that he created all things uh, and, and he is spirit, that God is spirit. So we discovered that and that a spirit is not matter, a spirit is not material, a spirit does not have atomic composition. A spirit is a totally different kind of entity, and God is spirit. And now we are going to verse 3, and we are introduced to the word of God in verse 3. And if you pay attention to what we are learning so far, you find the foundations of major Christian doctrines in the very first verses of Genesis, God uh, the creator, God as spirit, God as the word. And these are themes that will later come up in the Bible and eventually in the New Testament, developing such profound uh, theological positions like the Trinity. All of that is present as we encounter Genesis chapter 1. So, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Then God said... Let there be light, and there was light. Usually when I read that, I tell people, tell your neighbor, it's not your uncle who said. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. It's the third picture of God we see in Genesis chapter 1. The first picture He's a creator. The second picture, he's a spirit. The third picture, he is word. And so we see the word of God here. Let there be light, and there was light. And we find that phrase, God said. God said. Although word is not used, said implies word. In the Hebrew, it's yomer. And it means to have a will or an intent and utter a word. God had a will, God had a purpose, God had an intention, and he spoke it. So when we are talking about God speaking, it's not just a word that originates from his mouth or from his tongue, but it's a word that comes from himself from his intention, from his will, from his purposes. The word of God has roots in God. So, you find that phrase throughout Genesis chapter 1. Uh, many times, uh, the Bible talks about God said, and about eight times in Genesis chapter 1, God says, let, or God says something, let there be something, and then the thing comes, or he makes the thing to come. And eight times in all the levels of creation, God speaks and then he acts. The word of God and then the acts of God. So, when we say that something has been said, it implies that a word has been spoken. A word has been spoken. So when God said, let there be light, he released 
Word. Everybody say word. Please say it like you are in church. Word. All right. It's very important because from Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, we realize that God transmits his will through his word. God transmits his will through his word. And his word performs his work. His will, his word, his work. It is will that produces the word and it is word that produces the work. Will produces the word and word produces the work. So if I want to see the work of God, I must receive the word of God and the word of God must come from the will of God. You cannot see the word of God in a vacuum. You cannot just say, oh, I want to see God work. I want to see the power of God. But I don't have time for the word. Oh, I have time for the word, but I don't care about God's will. It's will produces word. Word produces work. That's the trinity right there uh, in, in Genesis chapter 1. The will, the word, the work. Let's say it together. The will, the word, the work. Say it one more time. The will, the word, the work. For the last time, class. The will, the word, the work. That's the sequence. God has a will. We know his will because he speaks his word. And when he speaks his word, it does his work. That's the way God works in Genesis. And when we master these concepts, it helps us to receive from God. He transfers or transmits his will through his word. The apostle John in the New Testament captures this magnificent truth in the first verse of the first chapter of John. First chapter of John is, is a reflection of first chapter of Genesis. And verse 1 of John's gospel, John 1.1. 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. This is foundation of Christianity. This is the foundation of Christianity. The word is God. The word did not just come from God. The word does not represent God. The word does not just carry God's idea. The word is God. And John develops that to the point where he talks about the word becoming flesh. And we know him as Jesus, the incarnation. The word is God. That's the big difference between Christianity and every other religion. Jesus is not just a good teacher. He's not just a prophet of God. He's not just a religious leader. He is the word of God. And the word is God. The word becomes flesh. So right there in Genesis chapter 1 and John chapter 1 we are encountering the word of God. The word is God. So we say that God and his word are one. God and his word are one. It's a foundational doctrine of Christianity. The word is God. So what does that mean? First, it means that God reveals himself through his word. God reveals himself through his word. We know God because he has made himself known. How has he made himself known? Through his word. His re word reveals him. So if you have a Christian who devalues the word of God, they are devaluing God's revelation of himself. 
Unfortunately, we are in an era where there are preachers who don't have any respect for the word of God. They believe that the prophecy they deliver is more important than the word of God that God has revealed about himself. And unfortunately, there are Christians who believe that the prophet's word or a man of God's word or a pastor's word is more important than the revealed word of God. You cannot know God outside of his revealed word. At least the God of the Bible. You may know other gods, but not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is known in the Bible. He reveals himself through his word. Secondly, he works through his word. Faith comes through his word. Everything God does, he does through his word. So, God is desiring to touch the earth. The Bible says the earth is without form, it is void, darkness is upon the face of the deep. And he needs or he wants to reformat the earth so it can move from unproductive to productive. And how does he do it? He doesn't just get to working. He doesn't send an angel to fix the earth. He doesn't just move things in the earth. The first thing he does is speak. So guess what? If God wants to solve a problem in your life, how do you think he's going to solve it? Somebody says, there are people who say, we want to see the hand of God, the power of God, the work of God. That's true. But how are you going to see it? Through his word. If you don't get the word, you will not get the works. If you devalue the word, you devalue his works in your life. So God speaks. He speaks. Now, of course, when we say God said, let there be light, I mean, there's sometimes a logical question you ask is, what language did God speak? Of course, the Bible is written in Hebrew. So was he speaking in Hebrew? Well, at that time, Hebrew has not been invented as a language because no man has been created to even speak. So God spoke. The words he spoke would not be a human language. But he spoke. Because speaking is not always in the form of an audible human language. You can speak without speaking. It's possible. I mean, I mean, for example, if you have a, a television set, have a television set. I remember uh, when I, I was growing up, for, when the first TVs came to Ghana, uh, if you want to make the TV work, you have to go to the TV. So you want to turn up the volume, you go to the TV and turn up the volume. You want to change the channel, you go to the TV and change the channel. And and, and you did that, and, and the, the, the TV, you know, those days the uh, pictures used to roll a lot. You hit the TV by the side, pow, double slap. And all of a sudden, the TV becomes sober and say, hey, hey, I get it. I have to stay on, on track. We're slapping the TV sets all the time. That was our language to the TV. We had to go to where the TV is to change the knobs and top them. And then later on, something happened called remote control and when you use a remote control you stand somewhere and that remote control speaks to the TV what language is it speaking it's speaking a coded language of zeros and ones through infrared and and it speaks to the TV uh, and and then the, uh, the channel changes and the volume goes up and all the things we used to do by physically handling the TV is now being done remotely because a coded information is passed on to the TV and it responds and conforms to the message coming from the remote. So I can understand when the Bible says, and God said, I don't think if you were there you will hear, let there be light. No, 
I believe God released a coded information, coded with his thoughts, with his will, his purpose, his ideas, into the atmosphere. God can speak into your life without you hearing an audible voice. He can do that. He can do that. So, God and his word are one. God works through his word. So let's go a little further. What did God say? Let there be light. In Hebrew, Yehi or. And if you translate it literally, it is light be. Light be. Not let there be, because if he says let there be, he's speaking to something to allow the light to be. But he says, God doesn't speak to something to allow something to be. He speaks to the light and says, you are not, but you will be. Let there be light. Light be. He calls the things which be not as though they were. He doesn't beg the thing. He doesn't plead with the thing. He doesn't cajole the thing. He speaks it and it is. Light be. That's the first lesson we learn about the word of God. The first thing we learn in Genesis. Of course, we know that the creation itself was spoken by uh, the word of God, but that is not accounted for in Genesis chapter 1. What is accounted for is that the word of God produces light. The word of God produces light. The word of God does not produce darkness. The word of God produces light. Light be. Now, normally when you're reading the Bible, it's always important to to, to understand what is being communicated. Because in Genesis, God is teaching us very profound things. This is the first time we are learning about God from the Bible. And it's telling us how God works and what, what does what. So, it's telling us the Word of God the essential nature of the word of God is to produce light. The essential nature of the word of God is to produce light. And we'll discuss a little bit uh, what that light is. And, and that theme is taken up again in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse, 5, verse 5. It says, And the light... Shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot hold it. So, if there is darkness in a place and God wants to dispel the darkness, guess what he's going to do? He's going to send his word. His word will produce light and the darkness cannot resist the light. That's how God works. If there is darkness in my life, in my family, anywhere around me, God wants to deal with the light, He's not going to deal with the light because I want light. Or he's not going to deal with the light even because I prayed. Without diminishing the power of prayer, we need to pray, we need to fast. We do that in the church, we do that. But we have to also learn God's processes well. So he wants to dispel darkness. What is he going to do? He's going to speak a word into the situation. And that word will produce the necessary light to dispel that particular darkness. Let there be light. There is light. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness does not overcome it. So what does light 
represent? Three things that the light represents. First, light represents illumination. It simply means making things clear. Light dispels darkness. Light brings about illumination. When we find ourselves surrounded by darkness, understanding God's word enlightens us. And the light, the darkness that the Bible talks about can be physical light or metaphysical light, uh, light, uh, darkness. Physical darkness or metaphysical darkness. Now when we say something is physical, Light, darkness, it's when we turn off all the lights, we'll have physical darkness. When we say it's metaphysical, it can be spiritual. That means darkness that is not of a physical source. And it can come in different forms. It can come through demonic activity. It can come through ignorance. It can come through all kinds of things. But it's darkness. It's source. It's not physical. Whether the source of the darkness is physical or metaphysical, the light of God will disperse it. And no matter how gross the darkness is, the word of God will disperse it. Illumination. The word of God producing light makes things clear. Staying under the word of God and the light of God brings deliverance. I understand that there is a deliverance ministry people are used to. A deliverance ministry where somebody is supposed to be under some dark force and we feel that they need deliverance. And there is a deliverance ministry where people are prayed for and and demons are cast out of them and, and all of that and all of that. And I understand that. But the greatest deliverance comes from the word of God entering a person and dispelling every darkness whether it is ancestral darkness, demonic darkness, witchcraft darkness, what mummy water darkness, the light of the word of God will dispel it. And sometimes all you need to do is get the word of God deep inside of you and every deep darkness will be uprooted. The light of the word Dispels darkness. It dispels darkness. That's what God did in Genesis chapter 1. He's telling us, if you have darkness, get the word. Let the word produce light and the darkness does not comprehend it. Just coming to church and hearing the word of God rightly taught and rightly delivered is bringing deliverance. Some of you have no idea the kind of deliverance taking place in your spirit, in your mind. You're going to find out all kinds of things that were harassing your life just dispersed simply because the light of the word has come into the darkness. Don't ever underestimate the power of the written word of God. Don't consign it. To a low level. Because that is Satan's number one job. Is to make you doubt. That the word of God is real. That's what he did to Adam and Eve. That's what he's going to tell you. That oh you think just the preaching of the word. Is going to bring deliverance. Somebody was saying that. Those of us who teach the word of God. We are called open to. Open to. And they said, we need a, we need a prophetic word. What is a prophetic word? It's from a human being who says he's anointed and he's saying something. I'm not going to judge him, but I'm saying, which is a surer word of prophecy? Is it that which a man speaks or that which God speaks? If you believe what he says, 
It will dispel the darkness. Whether it is physical or metaphysical, whether it is demonic or social, whether it's cultural or ignorance, it will dispel it. Sitting under the word of God dispels darkness. That's why you need to find a church where the word of God is properly taught. But just, because just by exposing your mind to the intelligence of God, it dispels all forms of darkness. You are being changed gradually without you knowing that you are being changed. The word of God brings illumination. Secondly, light brings information. It tells us something. When we receive God's word, we receive information about the things he wants us to know. And it is that information that produces transformation. The earth transformation from a non-productive ball to a productive ball that could sustain life was accomplished through the word of God. Through the word of God. Value the word of God. It will show you, it will give you information that will transform you. Inform to transform. It will transform you from a small thinking person to a big thinking person. It will transform you from a timid, oppressed person to a liberated, free person. It will transform you from a person running away from demons to a person who is chasing demons. It will transform you from a person afraid of witches to one who walks into the territory of witches and wizards and shake their hands for them to fall. Because when you have this word inside you, people say, when you go to your village, don't drink water. It may be the water is polluted, so you don't drink. But if you are telling me that it, because the demonic forces have the water, I will drink the water. Because if I listen and do not drink, I am saying, greater is he who is out there than he that is inside of me. If I believe the greater one is in me, I will drink the water. How do I know? Where is my confidence? It's not in my anointing. It's not because I'm a pastor, but because I know the sure word of God. It has fortified me. The word has cooked me. I am cooked in the word of God. The word of God is inside me, it is outside of me, it's in my mind, it's in my heart, it's in my word. When you have the word in you, you will walk like a champion. You walk like a champion. Wherever you go, you know greater is he who is in me. You walk upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you because the word has impregnated your mind. The word of God brings information. And finally, the word of God brings instruction to us. It gives us direction. It's our instruction manual. The maker, the manufacturer's manual For how we should run our lives. When God said, let there be light, he instructed light to appear. And there was light. God's word is instruction. When you buy any item, you buy speakers, you buy a microphone, you even buy clothes, except it's a wayside clothes. But if you buy clothes properly, every, every clothing you have comes with instruction. How to wash it, 
what kind of dry cycle, uh, uh, washing cycle you should use. But I've, I de- definitely, but if you go to Amasewa's uh, seamstress shop, and th- th- there will be no instruction. <laughs> you, ju- you just go and buy it and, and wear it. And then you wash the clothes and then it all runs. You say, ah, I didn't know it was running because there was no instruction. There was no instruction. Anything properly manufactured must have an instruction manual to show us how to properly manage and use that thing. If you are properly made by God, you have an instruction manual. It's called the Bible. And that instruction manual tells you what to say, what not to say. How to say, how not to say. How to see things, what not to see. What to look at, what not to look at. And it says, if you do these things, you'll be above only. I will not be beneath. The Christian life is not a magical life. It is a life of illumination, information, and instruction. It's an intelligent life designed by God for his greatest creation to live successfully in the planet he has made for that person. You don't go out living your life anyhow. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe it will be well. I believe it will be well. Yeah, it's good to believe it will be well. On what basis? Where is the manual? Have you read the manual? Have you read the manual about how you should think? Tells you what to think about. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are noble, think on these things. Tells you how to deal with people. How to deal with people who offend you. And if you follow the manual, your machine will operate at its optimal. You are the human machine. And God is a manufacturer. He gave you the manual. It is the word of God. The word that he used to bring all things, including you, into being, is the same word he tells you to use to maintain yourself in the world that he has created. The word of God is actually God himself. And when I walk in the word, I'm walking in God. Father, this morning, let your word touch every life, break every barrier, bring light, that your children will not walk in darkness, but they will walk in your word, the word from God, not the word of a man, not the word of a gift, but the word of God himself, the great manufacturer who made us. Let your word have free course in us. Let your word shape our minds, our thoughts, our words, our actions, our behavior. Let your word rule our minds. That we may live the life of dominion that you created us for. That we will not be subservient slaves to the forces of nature. But we will master over every force of nature. And walk in divine power and authority. By your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Are you determined to be a word Christian? Say, I'm a word Christian. Say it boldly. Say, I'm a word Christian. I'm a word Christian. The will of God produces the word of God. The word of God produces the works of God. And we're going to walk in his works in signs and wonders because we walk in the word. Amen. Amen.